right, so we're going to get into an important one for MIDI folks, people that are going to be using virtual instruments uh, with their Studio One and audio tracks. So uh, this will be a good one. So we're going to be setting up our external device or our keyboard controller. So now there are many different types of keyboards, some that use the old-fashioned MIDI connections. Uh, this particular one, it's an old keyboard, but it has USB. I'm going to show you how to set up a USB-connected keyboard into Studio One to control your VST instruments. Okay, so you can see here we're at the start page. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to open up a new song. We don't have to open up a new song yet, but we're going to take care of this. You know, open up a new song and we're going to click OK. And there we go. So we're in the new song. So now I want to be able to play this keyboard. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Options. And I'm going to go to the External Devices tab. If you open up your options, you'll probably see something like this. Or you'll actually be at the audio setup. So where you want to be for this is in the External Devices section. Now, you don't let this scare you here. You guys can see I have a ton of devices in here for different things and I'm going to be showing you guys all of this in this series of videos but for right now I'm going to stick with just a basic controller keyboard this is the Axiom 25 from M Audio so how do I set this up really really simple you go ahead and you click add so now once you click add you've got three types of devices that you can set up new keyboard new instrument and new control surface so let's start from the bottom and work our way up so for a new control surface this is going to be for setting something up that doesn't have a template that would be working like a fader port and you guys uh some of you guys that actually use studio one already you guys know that the fader ports you just plug them in and studio one sets them up you don't have to do anything to it it's all automatic but if you're using something like an old mackie baby huey or you're using a behringer BCR or BCF 2000 which is a bunch of knobs and a bunch of faders you would need to use this to set up the new control surface but we're not worrying about that now I just wanted to show you what that was now the new instrument is always confused for setting up the keyboard fact of the matter is this is for an external instrument like a um let's see like an alesis dm5 drum module or a roland jv2080 sound module or if you have old stuff like i do like an old roland sound canvas something with its own sounds that you want to be able to send midi to to play the instruments in those devices this would even even be good for an old on m1 that has its own sounds now that's a keyboard tone module combination that's a little bit more of a complex setup but for this for a basic midi controller external device for studio one and controlling its vst instruments we need a new keyboard really really simple so we're going to choose new keyboard and i'm going to click here in new keyboard i'm going to say m audio axiom 25 so i gave it a name so now if i just click anywhere else it actually writes the name to this setup so the good thing to do here is to make sure it's receiving or it's receiving all midi channels from the keyboard and we have a receive from and send to now this is really important the first thing you don't want to check any of these boxes because this is a filter so this will stop after touch this will stop program changes this will stop pitch bend and this will stop all of the other controllers so you could actually deactivate your sustain and your mod wheel too if you check uh, either of these and you don't want to do that so the important thing to remember is that this is studio one and we want to receive from the device from the m audio axiom so we're going to go here and we are going to choose let's see let's see if we can find the m audio axiom in our list and it's like okay so here is midi 2 m audio axiom now i don't think that this is the right one but i'm going to try it and i'm going to select that and the important thing the other important thing to remember is that the send to can remain at none since we are not going to be sending any MIDI information to our keyboard controller, this can be uh, this can stay at none. 
just like that. So we don't want to split channels. We don't want to uh, set it up as the default instrument. And we don't want to enable MPE. All things that we'll be going through soon in other videos. So we're just going to go ahead. We've got our title. We've got our receive from selected. And we're going to choose OK. Perfect. Now you can see at the bottom of the list. And I know Mike got a long list here. You can see the M-Audio Axiom 25 set up with the send to not connected and the receive from connected. This is normal. This is how it should look for this type of keyboard. So now I'm going to just going to click OK. There we go. So now I know that we, if you've been watching these videos in order, we haven't gotten to this part yet as far as controlling VST instruments, but I just want to make sure that my keyboard works here. We'll see what happens. So I've uh, actually pulled up presence and I have my, uh, my uh, ballot piano already. And I'm just going to drag this in and boom. The cool part about this is Studio One sets it up and the track automatically. So if I hit the keyboard, no, no, nothing's happening. So let's see if our instrument is working. And there you go. We can trigger this. Okay, a little side note for you guys here. It is important to understand, and this gets a lot of people, that this keyboard cannot be used to record MIDI data. It is strictly for auditioning so that you can hear the sound. You must have a controller or you must have the QWERTY keyboard set up. Again, that'll be in another video to actually trigger the MIDI. So what are we going to do here? So I'm going to go ahead up here and I'm going to arm the track just like that. And I'm going to go to my keyboard and just like I thought, it's not going to work, and I'm going to tell you why it won't work. And this is one of the situations you may run into, so I'm glad that this actually happened. Let's find out why our setup didn't work. I'm going to go back to Studio One, and I'm going to go to Options. There we go. Here's our Options page again. I'm going to go down to my M Audio Axiom, and I'm going to open up its setup. So you can see here that I have received from MIDI to USB M Audio Axiom. I have a feeling that this is the MIDI plug on the back of the keyboard. So I actually set this up incorrectly. So let's open up the list and let's go down the list and see if we can find another. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> OK, so this is actually good that you guys have seen this because this can happen to anybody. So I chose the wrong receive from designation. I'm going to go ahead here. Here's USB Axiom 25. Really simple. I'm going to select that. Instead, I'm still going to leave the send to set to none. I'm going to click OK, and I'm going to click OK here. And since I got the instrument pulled up and I have the track armed, haha, <laughs> perfect. Beautiful. Let me get an, a better octave here. So you saw what can happen if you don't select the right input when setting up your external device. And now, now I am going to be able to record MIDI tracks uh, as long as I want to without any problems. And that was actually a good thing to happen so that you guys could see that there will be some keyboards with a couple of other options when you're setting up the external device. So the MIDI 2 that you saw there is if I have another keyboard actually plugged into this keyboard and I want that channel to control something different. So you can daisy chain MIDI instruments and with some of these controllers, you can set it up to actually accept two inputs at once and have them both work at the same time. I could go here to the list for the inputs, and instead of choosing all inputs, I can choose the M Audio Axiom, and then I can also choose the MIDI 2 that has a different instrument, like maybe a drum pad hooked up to it, and I can assign them to two individual tracks, and you can keep building it up from there. So that is external devices, and this is just the basic setup for an external third-party keyboard Anything that Personas makes, like the Atom and the Fader port, and maybe they'll make a keyboard someday. I know that they have 
have a PS49 uh, keyboard controller. It's an older controller, but all of those devices set themselves up in Studio One. It sets them up automatically, so you don't have to worry about any of this. But most people are going to have some sort of third-party keyboard, so I hope that that makes sense, and I will see you all in the next video.